Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Tierno, the last series of Europe in which we are playing as, well I guess a custodian, well we'll see, but we're playing as everyone's favorite Komi Republic, but if you like to read about them please go right ahead. Also, if you like to read about the custodian please go right ahead, I've read that uh, quite a few times already, but for this campaign, playing as Komi, we're not going to stay as Komi forever, well, obviously we'll change, but our goal is to shoot for the stars with a certain... Zidanev eventually so that is my goal in this campaign for the Republic to eventually play uh, as Zidanev which sounds like a lot of fun but as you can tell from the thumbnail Mr. Zidanev is on the screen but that's okay if you'd like to read about Foundation to Sam please go right ahead like I said before I've read it quite a few times already and maybe the last year of Voznesence Voznesence if you remember that please go ahead as well and then the Peacemaker as well we wish to see as the sun we must weather the coming storm and, and I already know one of the comments I'm going to get is play as Tiono Yunnan, China. And I do. Eventually, I will want to play them, and we will. I'm just not sure at the time of this recording, just because I don't have a lot of time. So, uh, I can lower that for now. Social expenditures. Um, let's max out, I think it's admin. More taxable population, maybe. Okay, doing all that stuff doesn't even matter. Social spending. Uh, you know what? It's already so low that we might as well do it. Why not? We don't have a lot of money, but that's alright. Actually, I have about that one. Oh, the Defender, please go ahead. As well as the Modern Bogatier, please go ahead. And Radio Free Sective Car. Nothing but another right wing propaganda parrot. Quality reporting from a quality station. Decreases the influence of the center, huh? Well, what we need is a scavenge for loot. But immediately after that one, we're going to go ahead and uh, support public houses. To improve poverty. And increase the influence of Zedanev, because we love Zedanev here. Which actually, I don't know how to get to him. Get, play as him. We'll see. Uh, so decrease the amount of center? Yeah, decrease the center. Center's not cool. Who wants to be a centrist in these trying times? And of course we have warlord development. We're going to need a lot of political power. We're going to need a lot of political power. We're going to need a lot of uh, command power too. Should be very important. Oh, and we don't have anybody here really training yet. Uh, I do want to try to use some of these guys. Maybe we'll see. I definitely want some uh, helicopters. But there's that group. Um, there you go. Oh, and the uh, Avaz Nesinski. A day in the assembly. Very nice. A place for all of us. Well, we'll see about that. And scavenge for loot. <sighs> Support public houses. Yes. Yes. From coalition tickets, change uh, uh, party pop, pop, oh, party popularity for socialism. So Zedana will call him one more favorite. Decreases the influence of the coming right by a small amount. Decreases the influence of Zedana and he gave more political power. That sounds like fun. Uh, what is it? What do we do here? So I think increases security for police personnel. I want that political power one. Extra manpower would be pretty good as well. More socialism. More army XP. That can be very useful, but more political power is very good as well. Thank you. You can call up a bunch of favors, that's fine. Who do we want to suppress? Probably the center right now, because they're the most the strongest. Um, DSNSP, PSD. And there's our we're Democratic Socialists for now. They consider Democratic Socialism a centrist party? Social democracy. Hmm. Despotism. Hmm. KPK. We want the KPK. Fashionary, of course. RMP, PSD. There's PSD. That's a more DSMP. No, nah. Well, if anything, raise confidence in democracy. Eh, okay. If you want to be the visionary, please go ahead. Oh, actually, I, no, you know what? Let's read this one just because this is who we want to get. The winds blew through cold, through the cold, comey night. As a shadow tramped through the field, the snow crunched beneath his feet until he reached the ideal spot. The night was clear and silent, perfect for his serotipitous observations. He placed a long case in the field, withdrawing the tripod, deftly expanding it and attaching the telescope to the top. His nighttime adventures were a risk, of course. Suslov had expressed concern for his safety, fearing assassination attempts from the passionary, but... If even Comrade Suslov's men did not know of his excursions, how dangerous could it be? Glancing into the telescope. Andrei Zedanov's mind wandered. Far away from the lots of sick car, that snake pit of intrigue and violence, he found serenity in the gentle movements of the stars. Perhaps out there, they hope. Other beings who overcame their petty infighting and defeat the, defeated their worst qual qualities, an example for humanity to fall into new age. Freedom from want, freedom from conflict, and freedom from ignorance lay within the grasp of humanity. It was such a shame that it had been squandered for so long on the petty conflicts of the last decade in the great battle with the backwards, regressive Germans. But soon time would come. His vision would guide Russia and the world into a brave new era, and mankind would be free. The way forward lies in our hands. Let's see. Let's press a right. Um, you know what? We can do that one. There you go. We want to increase the pa pa faction power to the left, but that's like the only one we're going to do. 
Um, so that's the only time we're actually going to use it. Because next, ooh, paramilitary violence. Hmm. We still might want to get some money as well. Because it's influence, encourage file sharing. Eh, it's okay. Hasten army recruitment. I'm a vampire. The secret of you only about that was your head. A new player enters the game. Insider information. Eh, lost secrets. You only about that was your head. As well as this one. Friendly debate. Thank you. Another threat to an unexpected ally. Not bad. And this one is the most powerful faction is left wing. Good enough for now. Because we still might want to get. Uh, what do we have? We have 13. That's not bad. Trailblazer. There you go. Ah, Serov. Uh, I like doing external investments. Those are actually really nice to get. You have more money. Wait, no, no, I know. No, that's. Yeah, external investments. That's not bad. We, I like that one quite a bit. New friends. Ooh. Oh, actually, that's not good. Uh, ah. Now we can't do it. Dang it, that sucks. We're still scavenging for loot, though. Actually, no one wants to loot us. Alright. Equipment it is. It's going to cost a little more money, but that's okay. Uh, left. The Crusader. Gumilyov. Vlad Nikolaevich Gumilyov. Gumilyov. So you control. These two aren't really worth it. Yeah, I like this one. Just because the economy... When you, because of Warlord. It's really not good at all. It's not very good. Last year, I found that one. See? If you're going to build that, it's great. Oh, sorry, Lexi. Oh, liberal democracy. Decreases influence of von Snesensky. Eh, sure, why not? And fair to the National Assembly. More PP is always nice. Because right now our debt is what? 0.112. And how much percent of the GDP? 27%. That's not bad. Shevarevich, bearing the hatchet. Cool, cool, cool. Despite the differences, they would stay the course. Nice. Oh, oh my gosh, that's so bad. 0.39. Jeez Louise. It's pretty bad. And this one too. Rated to free Sikh of Kara. Show 357. The Ghost of Sikh of Kara. Look at that. And the 1962 budget. If you want to put that, please do it as well. The Regent. Oh, yes. God save Russia for only Tabritsky can. Ah, Tabritsky's campaign. I played him twice, actually. He's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And then we'll do Speak with Stalina in the next, if you'd like to agree about that. More third turn democracy. Because the influence of the center. It is what it is. Cut ties. Yeah, no. We're, no, we're not going to be cutting ties this time. Yeah, I don't think any of, these, uh, any of these are really worth it. I don't know how many favors we really need, because I want a lot of Zidana support. A lot, a lot of Zidana. Even more worse, but which wouldn't be bad either, but... Mm. Mm. Yeah, I don't think everyone who has been raided has already been raided, so... So, that's fine, whatever. Industrial investments would not be bad. Another production would be pretty good, though. And you know, we're doing actually relatively okay on factories, so... We could be hurting actually a lot worse. And speak of Stelina. Well, the budget. No alterations. Cost of you can handle this. Uh, let's do it with Cossigen, because we can. And if you wonder about paramilitary's report, please go right ahead, as well as passing the compromise. It had to be done to keep the system stable. For now. Let get more armor speed this way, too. It's nice. Very nice. But, oh, I kind of want to do this one. Uh, point one, two, three. Eh, I'll do it once, why not? Because we can. Research speed, thank you. Thank you. And we might want to keep some to get some more decreased uh, poverty rate. But actually, let's come over here. If you learn about these, please go ahead. There you go. And then, military policies. Very nice. And then, economic policies. 12 hour workdays. Receive card. Could it be true? And then, social policies, too. Sexual minorities outlawed. Oh, look, look at the poverty. It's not good. 69%. Nice, but not good. But minus points are away. It's not bad. Academic base is slightly getting better. Research facilities are getting quite a bit better. Agriculture getting bad. Admin efficiency getting bad. Expertise is going up. Army, even army professionalism is doing okay. Not bad. Conversation with Stalina. Well, at least she's a nice lady. House of Cards, not really concerned with anything over here. Pay debt. Oh! We just paid debt. Huh. Temp tax cut. No, we're okay. We still have a deficit. But hey, that's kind of nice actually doing that laterally. Actually, no, that was a bad idea to do that. My apologies. I forgot about that. Because you want to wait maybe till the end of the Warlord Age. Because 
this is a, affects a portion of your economy, I'm pretty sure, for external investments, right? So that was, oh, uh, uh, I made a mistake, right? External investments, yeah, I should have waited near the end, because you get a portion of that. Hmm. Let's keep our political power, we're going to need it eventually anyways. I'm going to spend it way too soon anyways. Yeah, i got to stop saying use the, words, the word anyways. But I hope you guys are having a pretty good day yourself. Yeah, I just want to get through this first part, because I've done it quite a few times already before, so. Oh, actually, what's done here? Coalition tickets? No, we'll try it again. Getting more political power is always fine with me. And I'll go up the treasure plan. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's see, we have 23 political power now. Does it change? That is my question. It should, right? It should. One more days. Probably more like two more days. Hey, we've got 50. Nice. Actually, that's really strong. More stability would be good, though. How much social support do we actually have? Economy support. Okay. 16% is not bad. Could be better, but could be a lot worse. Ooh, I don't want to raid Viaka though. Ooh, I don't want to raid them. Anyone else have money? I'm gonna just wait, maybe see if anyone else has got some loot. Direct action, expand operations. Nah. Oh, increase influence of the center, but that's a coming right. Ooh, that's fine. Yeah, structure repair bill. I just don't want to do that one. And then we'll do the government check. Yeah, that'll be good. Hello. Oh, there we go. Lord St. George. That's exactly what we wanted, my friends. Exactly. Oh, no. Now we have a little more debt, too. Oh, not good. Not good. Oh, more inflation goes spiky, spiky, spike. Scam for loot. Hopefully someone wants to raid us. All right, do that. I hope they say no. I want more army XP. Because army XP is very, very useful to have. Yay! We should be able to win here, right? Structure repair. Very nice. Tax heights. Oh, rates are successful. Great! More money! Tax heights. Increases the influence of the left. Income tax will increase by 1%. Spend a little more money. Okay. Zidane will be able to call in two less favors. You know, the center... No, we want more of this one anyway, so that's fine. Agriculture methods, why not? And then keep the government in check, because you might as well. Good job, Dimitri Panin. Spoils of war, oh, look at that, nice. Yay, more rifles. Uh, I do that one too. Mm, I kind of want to wait to see if we, can do, if we should do those or not. Yeah, I'm sorry, but these guys are not going to cut it here. We need way more equipment, though. Oh, boy, that's not good. It's an army recruitment. Manpower is actually not bad. Oh, the center is very strong, though. Mm, not ideal. So much debt. 2% growth, though. Brazil wins the World Cup. Not bad. Collapse of the Triumvirate. Oh, look at that. Nice. And we have Rodionov. Rodolino. Oh, we're going to that one. Please get it as well. Nice. Uh, Malshev. Kantonorovich. Reza Podnomarev. Now, what do you hide? I hide a lot of things. Digichev. Guido in Southern Argentina. And the Veil. Uh, that's no point. No point. And we're going to suppress the right this time. Because we can. Actually, I don't think I've ever played as Social Democracy. Comey, so eh, I'll do this one. The Municipal Pacification Act. I play the center. Plan of attack. The center was all the right is too concerning. Eyes to the right. If you want to, about that, please go right ahead. You have gains passed. Trail fades. There you go. This must be Sussex doing. Nice. And you have gains passed. They would trust each other to curb radicalism. But let's see. Armor activities. Uh, yeah, let's get more stability first. If you want to read about the extent of the shadow, please go right ahead. That would be very nice for us. Very good. Mm. The door's the bill. The more stability, you lose manpower. Mm. Oh, they kill the bill in the committee. Yeah, that'd probably be good for us to do. I don't want to decrease influence of the left at all. Yeah, nothing there. The toss equipment is worthless for us to do right now. But very. Oh wow, significant. But the left is very strong. With Sislav leading the way for now. Midnight walk. 
Let her fight her own battles. Put in a good word. Uh, let her fight her own battles. I don't want to lower influence of the left. So, and then arm activities. If you want to buy that, please go ahead. That'd be nice. Just want to raid a man. Ah, uh, you can train him. Why not? Because you can. Yeah, we could probably honestly use some more political power. Ten more papers. Looty booty, children to play, Silver Rights Act Pass. And happy August, everybody! Happy, happy August. Manifest of Order Socialism. Bring me Comrade Serov immediately. And go back to War of the Aka, huh? Or I guess raid him. They have no looty booties, huh? Give them a little bit of time, they'll have some looty booties. Anything up there? Nope. Close that one out. Thank you. Protection money? At least they're getting protection. Yeah, this one takes a while to do. Holy cow. But 8% stability, that's pretty nice. Oh, who died? Guiana? No. Oh. Ah, these guys. Forgot about those. UMAJF victory in Malaya. Nice. Good job, guys. Sussoff suppresses manifesto. Show them all. Hmm. Nice, nice, nice. This booty is so nice to have. Oh, Viaka no longer is oh, loot. Okay, well, whatever. Yes. Support public houses. Yes, please. And then form coalition tickets. Call on one more favorite. That's fine. Decrease the influence to the right. We love that right now. Manpower would be nice, but that's just not worth it. That's so much political power gone. So, so that's influence. Oh, and there goes the president of the Supreme Soviet. Good job, guys. Such a little time. Treasure what little time we have left. Oh, hello, Plasek. Yes. Even if it's over river, we should still do fine. It's fine. Oh, the lag is a fine, but whatever. 2% growth, not much. And back way down. And it's gonna go spiking back up. We're very unstable here in the Komi Republic. It is what it is. We do what we can. And they only have militia there, so. Ooh, that does not look weak at all. Oh, they paid the tribute, darn it. Dang it, I wanted to beat the crap out of them. Schools. The warrior monk, a moment to reflect. I did get my money, huh? Pay debt. Well, he's better than he was before. A strike from the left. Might as well just go through, blaze through the left side of here, so. You remember that? Please go ahead. Yay! Anything else? The request from Zidanev. Uh, when selected, it ceases the down request that we see send money to certain businesses. If not selected, we no longer be able to have contact with Zidanev. Mission's leaked. What would Papa Zidanev like? No, that's really strong. Army Reserve training is super good. Uh, this bit of power call in two favors. Slightly increases unemployment, low subsidies, effectiveness. Spend a little bit of money. Oh, well, it is what it is. You know, whatever. We got plenty of political power to help save that off for now, so I'm not really worried about that at all. Oh, so now, like I said, really, we want to say this: increases state GDP by three percent, increases our liquid reserves by thirty percent of our GDP to only one point one two seven billion. I don't know this political power now, but doing that later because that gives more political power. I think Kumi Republic Navy, not bad, not bad. And I will start reading things like when we get to the next stage as well. So, get to the attack psych, but no, nah, growth isn't very good right now, anyways. Yeah, I would really do that one. Yeah, but once you get like basically basically become Western Russia, uh, then you do that one. That's actually really strong. That's really nice to do. So I'm just gonna wait a little bit longer. It's fine. Whatever. It's fine. Six divisions. I want at least ten divisions out eventually. Oh, I hate fighting Western Russia so much. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I might have to do some funky stuff off screen just because I hate fighting this region so much. At least in this this stage. This stage sucks hard. Yeah, it's not too bad though. 
I didn't believe in Svetlana. Uh, Svetlana. Mama Svetlana. That's a lot of influence from Suslov. Holy crap. Socialism isn't doing too bad here either. Must have ultra nationalism. Here are the national spirits too. The, the Sictive Car Arsenal. That's really good for attack and defense. Was it always like that? I thought you lost attack and defense here, but whatever. Bringing the party will not follow revisionism. An ideological ambition. What? Shadow Clash of Shadows. A place for all of us. And then loop off of terror bombings. Mm. Oh yeah, if you're about that was good. Let me go ahead and save real quick. Just because we can. Removing the cancer. Oh, that sucks. Loot. So they're done a ceasefire. Requests, huh? So, uh, when selected, so I ceasefire was Guma layoff. Hmm. Fine. It's fine. Members of home, I miss you. You're going about Zidane if asked for ceasefire, please go ahead. Focus on the Eurasian's forces. Nice. So that long series, we need more than ever. Not have standards. Cool. And the interlude. Not bad. A victory for publicity. A traitor, huh? The new construction government. Getting behind Stolina, there you go. Too far. We are done with talk. Peace must come first. That's fine. I'm just, just clicking on things. I'm literally just clicking on things. I'm like, whatever. I just want Zidanov. I just want Mr. Space, Russian Spaceman. Military confrontation. If you're going to that, please go ahead. Meeting on the side. What about that? He's a good man. Hmm. We're having a good old time here. Connections revealed. Oh no. And he folds. It's fine, it's fine, whatever. The leak. Oh boy. That's fine. It's fine. No worries. No worries. Talk about forming coalition tickets and infiltrators. Yeah. Not bad. All quiet from Zidanov. The final betrayal. Nice. Oh. They're very strong. They're strong as well. The right is pretty weak, though. A stable partnership. Many fault. Successful ploy. We got, eh, I don't know about the Yaka man. Plasek? Plasetsk. Oh, they have no money. You guys have money, but you've been raiding the past couple days. Finding forgiveness. Interlude. Very nice. Linea, perhaps. There you go. And equal training zones. Equal zoning laws. Flowers. Very cool. The Jerusalem Conference. Uh, oh, we're on this side. Oh, I thought we were... Oh, that's Ukta. My bad. My bad. I thought we did this one. There you go. Come on, get in there. We should be able to win anyways. Come on, come on. And there goes Mad Madam Madagascar. Man, the roads here kind of suck, if you didn't know. Bro, can you get in there? It's uh, IVs are going there first. Even though we're not going to be using these guys too much for this campaign. It is what it is, but whatever. How are we doing for this? Debt not bueno. This GDP did go up. It was pretty nice. We're going to build some pursuit. Please go ahead. There you go. Oh, keep us safe from Suslov. 
best to be in his box. Uh, I don't lose political power. Yeah, whatever. Alright. Should be able to win there still. Center of it all. United of Kingdom, very nice. Opening speeches. Go scavenger for now. And still in the speech, not bad. Input from the assembly. Set off the effects. Oh boy. Enemies defeated. Good job, guys. Cost of speech. And back to the side. Fourteen days, we're almost there. Boss necessary speech. Good job, good job. And I just have to wait till everything collapses, so. Hmm. Poverty could be better though. Nomination. And then Walsh Unionists. Make an example, traders do. Let's go in. House of cards. It's alright. And of course they refuse tribute, which is fine with us. Gossage announces opposition and damage control. Could this be the future of Comey? Oh boy! I miss doing stuff with Zidanev. I miss it. Zidanev such a good guy. And they have been defeated. Kostigin wins domination. Oh boy. We have no extra money. Darn it. Hey, that growth is going a little better though. Suppose war. Very good. I think I've played this Kostigin before, I'm pretty sure, so. Coalition negotiations, election day preparations. Alright, not bad. I do apologize just kind of like not reading about all this stuff, because I've read it before and it might be slightly boring, Just, but you know, I want to make sure we get through everything here first. Focus. The Brawl, hammered and sickled. The District. Every election is determined by the people who show up. Mm, sort of. Debt 30%. Debt to GDP ratio. Get some more loot. Have people try to raid us. Have a good time with them. Don't die too hard. You know the normal stuff. Look at all normal stuff. Election day. Yes, please. You never know if Yaka might try to raid us. Why not? Go over there. See what you can do. Enjoy yourself. Ensure internal stability. Um, and I don't want this political power. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad to do. Yeah, yeah. It's not worth it. What else we got here? We're planning. Looty booties. Come on, people. Someone try to raid us. Going to the game, we don't have any loot ourselves, so. Come on, get some loot. Actually, how are we doing on equipment right now? I have an efficiency. It's pretty bad. Hmm, not looking good here, huh? Oh, well, that might explain it. Why? Happy March, everybody. Well, now I feel better about it. Alright. We got a whole loop. Hopefully someone wants to raid us. Where do mind people trying to raid us? Alrighty. And now, calculate the bombing intervals. War support would be very nice. Thank you very much. Nothing down there that we really care about. Oh, oh, there we go. Ukta, ukta, ukta. There we go. Finally, someone wants to raid us. Finally, 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 finally. Come for the booty. How many more days we got left? Ten days, and our guys are not looking so good. Let's give a little more time. We'll be fine. Just a couple more days. 
Eight days, not bad. Ooh. There you go. And sure, guys. Come on in. Try your best. Try your absolute darndest. Look at that. 35 armor XP, enemy speed. Nice job, guys. Let's go. Oh, they have two divisions. Oh, is that elite division? It looks like an elite division. Refuse tribute. Ref oh, dang it. Let's do ruthless facilities now. Pray for the bombings and then protect the people. Every voter deserves to be voted safely. Sure. Why not? Why not? Oh. Pay debt. Well, now we just added it to our debt. Death is getting worse. Hmm. Should we be concerned about that? Nah. We'll be fine without being concerned about it. Oh, are you okay over there? Ah, uh, because you see the crisis. And uh, Pietro Grigorenko. Thank you. Two weeks left for that one. 2.8% growth is not bad. Oh, credit rating. I forgot about this one. It's poor. Well, we're still at peace, right? Our deficit to debt or GDP is above a real growth rate. Oh. Oh. Not from the front. Always of use. Well, the goal is to get higher and higher and higher, so we'll see what happens. Watch the radicals. Because you might as well. Because we're also going to watch ourselves. And if you're going about into the unknown, please go ahead. But we're probably going to be doing the Minority Representation Act first. So. There's this one. There you go. Alright, better already. Yeah. I love them thick pounders. Not bad. The revolt that failed. Well, that sucks, bro. We need more infantry equipment. I like that we got more already. That's going to be really useful. We need more anti tank. We need some IVs. We're missing two, which is fine, but no, it's not really. Ah. Uh. Game went to play in South America. Reign of the Cavalry. That looks pretty cool. Juan Domingo El Ocenta. Bring back Lira Blues. Structural Unhingement. Wow. And then the Death of Discipline. Someday. Someday. Taking note. Bug is room. Yeah. Minority Representations. More max planning, please. Thank you. How close are we for this next one? Oh, we're not that far off, actually. Nice, yeah, we're all positive. We need more equipment and stuff, but that's okay. Nothing there. Vologda plus X. Oh. We could read them next. Maybe. Just maybe. Defense of the Republic Act. Excellent idea. Increase the influence of the left. Uh, hmm. How much influence of the left do we have? Fine. That's fine. Just a little more. Actually, it's a done of moderate influence, which is fine, because we'll be trading governments a whole bunch anyway, so it'll be fine. No worries. No worries. Just let me raid. Just let me raid their butts. Yeah. Oh, we, we can raid them too, but they don't have any loot. Oh, there goes Bianca again. Which is fine, you know, whatever. Bianca can exist if they want. Lobster Wars. And KPK provisions call four less favors. I like that one. I always like going for the four year draft because we need more manpower. We absolutely need more manpower. Um, I don't know this political power, so there you go. And then, into the unknown. Violence at the polls. Nothing like a good bit of violence to help you have a good day. In Vino Veritas. Let me raid. Give me your butts. Oh, they're raiding up here too. Look at that. Bukita. Come on, get some money, kiddos. I'm gonna beat you up for your lunch money. 
Wow, 44.3%, not bueno. I can't wait to have my government flip seats all the time. Ooped up, there you go, whatever. But at least we got seven divisions that are alright. We're going to use and abuse the IFVs a whole bunch. Let's go! Yeah. Yay, they refuse to rebuke. Nice. Violence of the poles. Oh, no! Whatever, what do we do? We're going to find the workers. That's what we'll do. Oh. Dead interest is almost 10%. Holy crud. Food for the hungry. Very nice. 400%. Oh, inauguration of President Zidanev. Would you look at that, my friends? The results are in, and it appears that Andrei Zidanev has been elected as the first KPK president. Was it simply a dissatisfaction with the status quo, a maddened sense of radicalism, or was it something about Zidanev's personality, or personally, that elevated him above the other candidates? Either way, Zidanev now stood before the new, much more left-leaning National Assembly, no longer the leader of the KPK in the National Assembly, but as president of the Republic. In his inaugural speech, facing packed observer boxes and a nervous assembly, the visionary communist laid out his plan, or plans for the Republic. Friends, comrades, people of the Republic... I stand before you all today with the utmost pride through our victory if the people of the Republic have condemned oppression and called for a revolution, a revolution that they've realized today, but we must not be satisfied by our current victories. There's much to do and much to strive for. A true people's democracy, an end to stagnation and aggressivism, and a vision for a wondrous future in which all peoples may be truly free. I call upon the people of the Republic, upon the workers in our factories, upon the peasants in our fields to recognize that we have stepped into the socialist future, and this is only the beginning. Zidana's speech, as most openly radical ever delivered by President of the Republic, immediately drew cheers from the KPK's base, but his critics have decried his extremist tendencies, lack of true belief in democracy, and the lack of basis in reality. With well, a member of the KPK in the highest office in the Republic, only tell me tell that President Zidanev was the right choice for Comey. The people have spoken, my friends. And welcome aboard, Zidanev, ultra visionary socialist. Uh, and we can read about him a little bit. The revolutionary the revolution by ballot. After the most contentious election process in Comey's history, our party stands victorious. A Communist Party candidate, Andrei Zidanev, sees the presidency and thus reigns of power. That's the first step in a socialist revolution that will seek to respect the rule of democracy, at least for now. As the Communist Party attempts to empower labor and root out reaction in the Republic, we ought to grapple with the fact that our opponents consider us illegitimate and dangerously extremist. Some have reported even refused to attend sessions of the legislature. Nevertheless, our mandate is impossible to ignore. The other parties will have to learn to respect the Communist Party's wishes, whether they, through the easy or the hard way. Ooh, labor. Collaboration with labor. The goal of the KPK has always been to restore the dictatorship of the proletariat. In accordance with Leninist principles, under the current circumstances, this requires working with the trade unions. Unions are, of course, a temporary measure in the grand scheme of things, but for the moment they are the primary instrument of the will of the proletariat, and as such must be considered when drafting policy. We shall begin drafting laws to delegate powers to the various trade unions, including and especially a policy of greater self-management, though the extent of this remains to be determined within the party by working with the unions. We will soon be able to demonstrate to the people that the bourgeois liberalism of the republic must be abandoned if they wish to enjoy a better life. The last sweeps the National Assembly. The results of elections are in, and the KPK, once considered a French party, has won a majority in the National Assembly. As Democrats and rights alike awaken after a hard-fought election night and listen to the radio reports in shock, it has become apparent that the leftist discontent in the Republic was far greater than has ever been imagined. While even the liberals of the KPK, or opponents of the KPK, contest the results through every channel available to them, the leaders of the communists within the National Assembly hold hurried meetings to determine the new agenda. Originally expected to defeat the radicals decisively, these reelections have instead demonstrated the hubris of the center coalition. Well, protests that mixed royalist and Republican flags spill into the streets across Sikta Car and judges order recount after recount in close districts, it seems that the Republic spirals close and closer to full transition to socialism and perhaps the end of democratic governance entirely. The end of the Republic? Oh, let's hope so. I can't wait. It sounds like fun. What's not to love? 0.13. Even if we did that, we still have a bit, quite a bit of debt, and that's not what we want. We want some basic arty, because you and me, we're going to party hardy with that arty. Kyle elected. Good luck. Yep, I'm going to play this one. Yeah, Kyle. Kyle's fun. Suzuki's gone. Goodbye, Suzuki. E. Yeah, it's not bad. New boss. Good 
Uh, good, uh, Comrade President, though perhaps the photographer paled before he could finish his sentence. And frozen in front of Zidanev. Yes, Comrade, Zidanev asked. The photographer cleared his throat. Well, Comrade, it's just your uniform, sir. It might not seem, uh, presidential. He audibly gulped. I'm sorry, Comrade, I didn't... It's fine, it's fine, Zidanev waved the young photographer off. He had to admit this wasn't going well. Half the people around him looked like they were afraid to do anything around him for fear of some reprisal, like he was a Tsar who could have flogged them at a moment's notice. <clears throat> what was there to be done about it, though? He remembered how they treated Lenin and Bukharin. And if he was going to restore a Soviet order to Russia, they'd treat him like that as well. But they liked Bukharin. A golden child, they called him, with his boyish face, affable smile, and his charming manner, sure. People feared Bukharin's uh, name, but they faced the man... But when they faced the man himself, they were laughing and joking with the general secretary. He had his disagreements with his erstwhile comrade and boss, but Nikolai had been good at one thing, making people like him. That's how he'd come to power. He had to calm those around him. Zidane adjusted to the one of the party of militia officers he brought with them. Hand me that cap, comrade, and he put it to his head. Comrade photographer, do I look more presidential now? He asked, smiling to the people around him. A few of the party men dutifully laughed, and the photographer gave him a stiffle chuckle. Zidane's smile faded. Perhaps he was no Bukharin. Take the darn photo, comrade photographer. Wow, look at that. That is one unique um, image. National focus. National spirit. Jesus. The revolution shall not be civilized. Those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. An alliance of convenience. Um, Zidanev shook the hands of the Socialist Worker As Association Chairman, Vice Chairman, Secretary Treasurer, and what felt like an endless series of committee members. The well, unions, he thought, contempt contemptuously. The workers looked to them for protection the way men used to look for caves and tents for shelter. Soon, there would be something far superior to give the workers of the world protection. Still, he had to deal with them for now. Comrade President, the Chairman began, thank you very much for meeting with us. We're extremely pleased to have a President committed to socialism and the workers' struggle. I'm glad to hear that, Comrade, but... First, we must build the workers' utopia before we can celebrate it, no? Let's not count our chickens before they hatch. A few chuckles came from the committee, but nothing much. The Zidanev continued with, We have much work to do. Our paramilitaries and loyal soldiers are still attempting to sweep up the disloyal elements in. Actually, uh, Comrade President, we were hoping to discuss something else, the chairman interrupted. Before we can discuss any of these measures, we need assurances. Assurances, Comrade? Yeah, sure. You bewilder me. What assurances do you need? The old union of subordinated workers' associations to the party before. We understand the role of the vanguard of the revolution, Comrade President, but Bukharin's experiment ignored the role of the workers in favor of bureaucrats. Present company excluded, excluded of course. Zidane stared at them and tried his best to hide his contempt, treating in consciousness and nothing more. I escalate the process. The common inspired quest for socialist revolution through traditional legislative means is fraught with dangers from a variety of enemies. Members of parties. But the Democratic Senate still entirely refused to cooperate with us, and the reactionary right is naturally extremely hostile to our project. And the security apparatus, there is always the risk of element, military elements hostile to the revolution undermining us through force. It's for these reasons that we must hasten our transition to socialism. The party and supporters need to be on a war footing. What this means in practice is a vigorous campaign against the enemies of the people, both through a propaganda offensive and through investigation of potential foes within the state. Our enemies are a myriad and ferocious. If we're not on the guard, we could easily be swept up in a merciless tide of reaction. And the changing of the guard. The upper echelons of any standing army are almost always in the service of reaction, as 1917 taught us. As such, we have always anticipated a needing to move against the army general staff. But there are elevation in the case of October, and its possible mobilization by the Republican army is forced to consider dealing with them sooner rather than later. Defense Minister Chelomye Chil has been tasked with ensuring the stability of the revolution against reactionary officers, and so far seems to have done well in this task. The chief conspirators have been isolated by firing or neutralizing key mid-ranking officers, and now all that remains is to remove these men from service. We'll tolerate no counter-revolution from our army ever again. Which is a good thing. An alliance of convenience. I don't know. Later implications for the le legitimacy of what? Of the center. Uh, working with liberals? Nah, we're good. We don't work with liberals here. A pile of secrets. Official this meeting. <clears throat> It was happening in the presidential residence, in truth, however, it was happening in a secret Communist Party safe house. Far from the prying eyes, cabinet meetings were technically not open to the public, and so to host the rest of the party leadership, he needed it held away from the normal location. Well, there were additional reasons for the secrecy. secrecy. This was discovered near an incinerator in the Ministry of Defense, and the Republic began, passing copies of a dossier to the members of the cabinet. Case of October, as you can see, d details a plan by the Republican Army to launch a military coup against the government in case of the government failing or falling into our hands. I was directed by, by Grigorenko and Korolkov. I assume this was without Vosnesson's case approval. Oh, correct, comrade Furtseva. They considered an own, him an unreliable element. Anthropod turned to Zidanev. Comrade President, if they have incinerated most of the documents, we can only assume that they will strike immediately. Zidanev feud. Those bourgeois pigs. He slammed his fist against the table. Those pigs and dudes. I am their president. Don't they see I am for the good of the people? The rest of the room looked nervously at one another, all except Suslov, staring at the president through these cold spectacles of his. He didn't fear Sosov, but what was he planning? 
Anthropod's voice brought him back to reality. Comrade President, I recommend stationing the following units around Sictive Carset, handing a list to the President. I have vetted them personally, and they are loyal to the revolution. We can use a pair of militaries to suppress the traitors. Zinadana, calm down. Calm, he'd have to be calm. Calm, like Bukharin had been, but Bukharin had been dispelled. Uh, Zidana dispelled the thought from his mind. If it was not Bukharin, he would not fall. Skewer those pigs, Vladimir. And I cast down the Passionary. There remains one major threat left to deal with. The Passionary organization, the collection of esoterics and crypto fascists, was left to fester by the liberals, and so has ever. It falls the socialists to bring an end to the reactionary menace. Only we have ever had the courage, the will, and the ideological motivation to see these lunatics, lunatics driven out of power, now with the means to do so. If we are to save Russia, we must remove the Passionary at once, and by any means necessary. With our current power, we have numerous methods at our disposal. We could always ask the liberals to cooperate in removing what is clearly the larger threat in hopes that they will see reason, or we could turn for more forceful means. One way or another, Gumilyov and his coterie are a den of vipers, and we must destroy them. <clears throat> or cut the head off the snake. Mm, we're good. We don't really feel like beating them up again. <clears throat> or trying to beat them up, so... El Pinko Slippos. Uh, good General Grigorenko, I have another one. Uh, the aide said as he handed another slip of paper to Grigorenko, the chief of staff examined it. Colonel Arkady Bezmanov, an officer with a decent enough record, served in the Great Patriotic War. Operation Suvorov, joined the Republican Army rather than join it with the Front or with the KPK paramilitaries. Oh, that was it. A minor infraction when he hadn't been paid enough at a cafe in 1960 was the only real misdeed in. Indeed, it was one listed as a reason for his discharge, but Grigorenko had noted Bezmanov before. For his refusal to allow KPK propaganda leaflets to be distributed in his unit. The discharge order has been a lot signed by the president himself. The fifth one this week. Good Edgar Ringo touched the discharge order aside. Did, did Zidane know? They'd incinerated all the October files, or had they? There had always been comments infiltrated. They had a copy been leaked? No, couldn't have been. Darn the October files, though. Either way, Zidane was beginning to branch beneath the Republican army. It was only a matter of time until Edgar Ringo would fall down with it, unless something could be done. The revolution shall not be civilized for the time for the time for restraint is over. The passionary, with extreme ideology and terroristic assaults on politicians of the other parties, have proven themselves entirely incompatible with the values of the republic or its people. For every day it exists as an independent political faction, Comey becomes less safe. The forces of reaction cannot be allowed and dangerous any longer. With our legislative majority, we have the power we need to stymie them forever. The Communist Party and what remains of the anti-fascist allies it has among the parties of the center, will vote to declare the Passionary unconstitutional for Nazi sympathy and conspiracy against the Republic. The battle against the far right will be far from over, but its power on the ground will be, put, be but a shadow of what is, was before. What the heck are you? Military police, that's all you need to know. Military police, that's no military police uniform. Who? Shut the F up, get in there, the supposed military policeman growled, motioning to a conference room. Grigorenko stepped through the site, uh, to the site of Korokol, Korokolov, uh, Korokov, and Panin sitting around a table and Defense Minister Andropov standing at the end. Ah, Petro, come in! Andropov snarked. I was here to deliver the good news. He pulled out three letters and handed each of them to their intended recipients. Grigorenko opened his and quickly scanned it. As soon as he read the gist, the gist of it, he heard pen and shout. Discharge! We've been discharged! Dishonorably! Well, you can. Yes, I can. We discovered these case October files. We have your signatures, we have your orders, and we have enough to put you in front of a firing squad. You're lucky we haven't already. Why not just hand us the letters? Come now, Petro. You're proven traitors. We can't risk you choosing to try and start your revolt early. Now, please follow the officers outside. The military police officers opened the door and the three began to step outside. Grigorenko turned in the doorway and glared at Andropov. You won't get away with us. We're the most popular generals in the army. We're heroes. You can't get away with us. Andropov smirked. I'm not the one who has to get away with anything. You are. Huh. Yeah. We're not going to be very civil here. 2.5%. Eh, could be better. Does get worse, but whatever. You know. It happens. Vlog de oh, Pasuk. Uh, we have the opportunity. You might as well take the opportunity while you got it. Removing the rock. The military has been mostly been secured, comrades. We have passed the first test of the return to the true popular rule, but it is just the first. We now have a second and arguably more pressing the passionary. Fortsevia had handed out the dossiers to the cabinet members. As liberal capitalism falls and collapses into its inevitable demise, many look to the light of socialism as the future, but others among the middle class and some misguided proletarians look to the past to the esotericism of Gumil Gumilyov and his cronies. Zidane have shrugged. We can deal with them easily. We can strangle them by cutting off their voter base and disrupting their meetings and fundraising, but... And also to use the police to break them up. Eh, would it be that so simple, Comrade President? Fertseva bemoaned. 
As you are doubtlessly aware, our former comrade, Seraph, has joined the Pashtunary in his naked revisionism and prowler lust. He is intimately aware of our security procedures, our structure, and our weaknesses. Most importantly, this Ordo Solstice paramilitaries are extremely dangerous. All X Red Army are X and KBD. They're not Gumilyov's lambs. They have no comp compunction with killing, and Seraph has no compunction with having them do so. The counter threw, thought the matter over before a voice in the shadows whispered quietly, Comrades! Everyone here is aware that whoever the people hate the Germans the most. They have taken everything from us and everyone on the streets. <clears throat> knows that at least someone who died of the German bombs or bullets. And what if Seros is not a fascist? Mikhail Sosov leaned near the light. What is the greatest friend to the fascist if not the German? Ziona faces former protege. We know they are likely Nazi collaborators. We can't prove it to the people. Come our president, we have his manifesto, and you know as well as I that where evidence is absent, I can be found. And they collaborate with Seros, and then, of course, once the people see these Jumma files for what they are, there'll be no one left for them. And the Popular Appointment Act. The way we can best secure a transition from bourgeois capitalist democracy to the dictatorship of the proletariat is through a piece of legislation known as the Popular Apportionment Act. A bill that redraws the prior election districts, as these districts are designed to, fall, to allow for the participation of bourgeois democracy. They need to be drawn in such a way that grants the KPK additional seats to ensure the party is always able to maintain a plurality in the assembly. In addition, it allows the president to dissolve the assembly in order to allow additional time to prepare for the upcoming elections. Our opponents may decry this as undemocratic, but the true democracy can only occur once the bourgeoisie has been suppressed and power power given to the workers. Through the vanguard, we shouldn't expect them to understand, and if the assembly refuses to pass a bill then, President Zidanev can use his emergency powers to implement it. One way or another, the death knell of von Znesinski's liberal perversion rings loud and clear. The heads of the Hydra. Lieutenant Popov wasn't a communist, but he was a loyal soldier of the Republic. If the president said the rightists were traitors, then that was enough for him. At least Zidanev was obeying the rules of the system, unlike Gumilyov and his ilk. He marched through the hallway of the Passionaries HQ, and at the head of the veritable stream of soldiers to the door. Time to put the traitors down. He knocked on the door, uh, the locked, locked door of Gumilyov's office. Lev Nikolaevich Gumilyov, he announced. The building is surrounded. Come quietly and face prosecution for your crimes. Nothing inside except the faint sound of a window being opened. He grunted, then he had two soldiers accompanying him kick down the door. The office full of shelves and books was dark and devoid of people save one man. He stood in front of an open window holding a, a rope tied to his heavy desk, and then looked at the door. His eyes filled with fear as he saw the soldiers, then he tried to climb through the window. Popov grabbed his legs as he tried to escape and dragged him back inside the office. Gumilyov squirmed on the ground as Popov slammed handcuffs on him, and then pulled him to his feet and forced him through the door. Outside, he threw Gumilyov into the same truck as his bulky, raging figure in an old uniform, then shut the door. He turned to a beat and bruised a sergeant, Fedorov. Serov, I presume? You know, some other ex NKVD thug that took three men to subdue. Hmm. He checked his list. Gumilyov and Serov were already in custody, but where was Tabaritsky and Shevarevich? He sighed as the minutes went on, and the missing passionarists remained missing. Eventually, as the trucks were loaded with guards, archivists, and others, he decided his work was done. Where could they have gone? Ah, uh, I love making arrests. Honestly, this looks really good. A lot of green here already. It's awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah, I can even submit more support, though. But passion play. Gumilyov and Serov, once the masters of the passionary and contenders for the thrones of Komi, rattled along. In the back of the trucks, their heads hidden by black bags, shackles on their hands and feet clinking with every bump in the road. Serov sat, with his back straight, feet planted firmly on the floor as a former member of the NKVD. He had no illusions about what was at the end of the road, and he embraced it. Gumilyov bent over in his seat felt sick, not only from the certainty he was about to die, but from the jostling and jumping of the truck along the potholed road. He had once said that you couldn't kill an idea, but now that he was facing his almost certain death, he could suppose that a bullet in the head might kill any ideas he could have had. The truck squealed to a halt, and the KPK thugs in the back of the truck where the two passionary bosses hauled them to their feet. The bags were torn from their faces, and Gumilyov blinked and swore as the light hit his retinas. It was, he supposed, a nice day. Birds chirped, leaves crunched under his feet. At least he would die in his beloved Eurasia. Serov was an, an impassive giant who knew what was coming or going on in the contradictory mind of his. And of the line fascist said a guard holding a submachine gun. Any last words? Gumilyov shrugged. Why not? You're right. The guard pumped bullets into the Eurasianist, light glinting through the holes punching into him. Gumilyov's shredded body fell to the ground without a sound. The guards chuckled, chuckled at their little jest. Serov said nothing. Just fixed the shooter with dead, hateful eyes. The guard didn't play with him, simply shooting Serov between the eyes and letting him drop. The right decapitated. Eh, not bad, already. Power secured? It had been a few hours since the popular apportionment uh, mint act. Laid on his desk, and with one stroke his, with, of his pen, months of planning and scheming were complete. Of course, the route here wasn't perfect. It would have gone much better if he went through the National Assembly successfully, but plans don't usually go perfectly, but there was nothing wrong with his more using more unofficial ways to get things done. There were protestations, of course, but that only gave more reason to remove those seditious, more seditious than others. There's nothing the reactionaries could do. Socialism would always march on as soon as it would uplift Russia. Staring out of the window under the crowd of protesters, Zidanev listened as a crowd of gunshots began to fill the air. And then anger shots turned to screams, and it was all fine, he mused. 
A victory was a victory, and soon all would see the benefits of his party would bring to Russia, even the reactionaries. Victory by any means necessary. So we get universal voting, or we had universal voting with registered voting. No more political power. I like that. And just our expertise begins to improve while we lose 25% stability. Holy crap. And hunt. Oh my god, 100 political power. Holy crap. That's not good. The new age of the revolution. Finally, we have done it. Ever since Lenin. First letter people. End of the revolution. Socialism has been the true destiny of Russia. However, this rule has not been kind of the revolution, and much of the motherland has abandoned Marxist teachings, but with the success of a revolution by ballot, <laughs> totally, we've taken the first step towards reigniting com communism's torch. Despite the liberal institutions standing in our way, we've taken a great step towards the socialist future, and the party is now the sole authority left in the sick car. We may breathe easier, knowing that Comey's liberals and rights have been rendered impotent. The new secured National Assembly has passed a bill to dissolve the Comey Republic and institute a new Soviet Comey Soviet Republic, with a constitution pattern off the old Soviet Unions. <clears throat> However, our regime still has many enemies left to face. Western Russia may be home to our ideological allies in Arkhangelsk, but many of our neighbors seek to destroy the revolution once and for all. So our fascist collaborators and whatever abomination the Aryan Brotherhood have become, they all wish to see us in a cause dead. We must consolidate ourselves. We must equip the people of Komi. We must go to war. The rest of Russia will not embrace the revolution and must be spread by force of reactionaries, clinging to a doomed cause. And we shall prove to them through the strength of our bonds and strength of our arms. Onwards. Nice. Gains internal conflict, we lose political power and division recovery rate. Well, god dang it. Onwards, my friends. Now we're nice and pink. We're a pinkish reddish color. Oh. What happened to us? <clears throat> the revolution secured? Secure the party. Despite the efforts of the reactionaries, communism and Comey survived. We've managed to weather civil unrest, survived de deception, and finally taken uncontested power. With the stabilization of Comey, the time has come to look outwards for too long, Comey's or Russia's remained divided. Split between countless warlords. <clears throat> we will end this chaos and uh, anarchy by first bringing the warlords in our region to heal than the ones in the rest of Russia. The reactionaries throughout Russia may think the flame of revolution extinguished, but they are wrong, for it's only just beginning to burn. Oh, begin the rebuilding. Ooh. True army, yes. During the chaos and coma, we were forced to lean on our militias and elements of the Republican army that were loyal to us. However, even though we are now in control of the military, the fact of the matter remains that the military is defensive in nature. To embark on a grand campaign to unify Russia now with the current military would only lead to failure. Therefore, it's clear we must revamp and reform the military into the Comey Red Army, so that we can not only defend us from threats, but help us push aggressively against our enemies and unify Russia, the remnants of the opposition. <clears throat> if we want to put this, please go ahead. Let's get to work. I forget about this stuff. Um, all directions. Just spin all the people for that. That's fine. I, I don't care. Attempt in a prison. That's fine. Uh, reliable commissars. Ooh, we lose political power. I don't want to lose political power. Soviet training. Yeah. While we've done our best to train the army, the undeniable truth is that we're not up to par. Many of the other warlords have been able to lean on training schools of various generals in order to maintain a more professional standard in order to rectify the situation. A decision has been made to utilize the old Soviet training schools to help rectify the deficiencies in our army. It may take some time for the results to be truly be felt, but it's a necessary decision as the army requires modernization and proper training to make it a force strong enough to reunify Russia. Oh, well, there goes Amur. Quite a bit of lag. Oh, because yeah, the Germans of war. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, well, whatever. Good luck with that. So now we want a lot of Zidane of this Zot. Bukharanis? Nah, we'll come close that up for now, too, so we can look at this really easily. Ooh, 51%. Not good. Hey, a little growth, though. That's nice. I like the growth. Growth's pretty nice. And the world is falling apart. But it's fine with us. We don't really care about the rest of the world for now. I don't want reliable commissars, man. I really don't. Packed with the front, and that's your reception. We'll see what happens. It's not up to us for that one. It begin the rebuilding. After so many years, the German bombs have finally stopped falling, while we weren't able to immediately begin re the rebuilding. Due to the chaos that enveloped Comey, the time has come to fully utilize all the resources Comey has to offer. We can begin the paving of more roads to reach even further deeply rural lands. Furthermore, we can rebuild the train stations and railroads and use them without the exception that they will be destroyed in a matter of weeks, allowing us to transport more resources across Comey at a quicker rate. While one could argue there are many new options open to us, an infrastructure drives the most pressing matter to complete. As a country is nothing without infrastructure, if you want to put this up, please go ahead. Report concludes, report concludes, report concludes, and then report concludes. And of course, report concludes. Relax restrictions on ideological deviation. Um, yeah, we might want to do that one. And time use up a lot of stuff here. Oh, yeah, those other guys are pretty limited. It's fine. Good luck with that, guys. 3.3%. Extremely high deficit. Oh, I want to call that extremely high. 
It's pretty high, but not extremely high. Serbi's right of is up. Serbi, Serbi, Serbi's. Nice. Ah, Soviet training. Unearth the caches. Actually, anything else here first before we do that? Yeah. It's one of the parts I don't like about Tino, which is it just lags so hard sometimes. That's not Tino's fault. It just lags hard. Unearth the caches. When the front collapse and the German bombers increase, this decision was made to hide a large amount of weapons away. So, as a straight bull bomber two will not leave Comey bereft of weaponry now. When the bombing's over, we can begin the process of opening up the caches. Some of the equipment may have been destroyed or stolen, but the majority of the caches that we've opened up now still do seem to have functioning weapons. The caches, or access to new equipment, will allow us to continue the process of upgrading the army, as long as we're more ready to begin the process of reunification. Nice. We'll get there. The overall state of the party is stable. Of course, it doesn't help. I mean, we will need... Oh, my God. I hate I hate it when Muscovine explodes. I mean, it makes sense for it, too, but just lag scan extremely hard. Oh, we want to keep some political power here, too. Some command power. Not political. Command power. You should have done all that stuff. That's fine, whatever. Cut and run. If you want to build up, please go ahead. What happened to this lady's steel? Nice. Was that it? I guess that's it for now, huh? Oh, well. 34%, 29%. Look at all that green. That is so good. So good. So tasty. Begin the rebuilding. Yes, please. And secure the party. Eh, we could probably wait to do all that stuff later on. Reliable commissars. While we're in no danger of a counter-revolution, the fact remains that Comey is in exactly the most stable places. Furthermore, we cannot rely on a large number of the politically educated officers due to the fact that many of them were educated against communist ideals. We must begin building a cadre of new political officers, ones that are fully trustworthy in order to not only prevent an ideological schism between the government and the army, but also so that we can maintain control and stability here in Comey by preventing the army from maintaining sympathies for enemies. I don't want to lose any more political power, but division defense on core territory is really nice. We already don't even get one a day. Oh, good. Very nice. Eighty-eight, sixty-seven. We'll see. We're we're very far from done. Very far, very very far from done. Not bad though. Thirty percent is pretty good in my in my opinion. Good, good, good. Oh, another division. Nice. Oh, we're close. We have nine divisions, which is pretty good actually. Any other field marshals? Opslenden. It's not bad. We'll, be, we'll go with you though. The road to our Congress. Out of all the warlords of Western Russia, the West Russian Revolutionary Front is one of the few that could be considered an ally. While the WRF is ruled by the military, as compared to our civilian rule, it is still a believer in the ideals of communism. In order to take advantage of this possible alliance, we should send an envoy to the WRF in an attempt to open up relations. There are fears that the Front may see us as an enemy. As Comey did technically split from it after the West Russian War, but the Front likely needs an ally in Western Russia as much as we do. Cooperation with the Front will see us a victory. At least that's a hope. Now we need more command power. We have only 4% war support, though, which really sucks. And we'll read this one, too. Secure the party. While our party maintains a unified and organized front for the rest of the world, internally, the party is a mess. Competing sub-ideologies and fighting and a general lack of cohesion threatens the very foundation of our state. The members of our party should be made to realize who is in charge and how our party is going to be run from now on. All party members are going to have to be brought onto the same page regarding goals, ambitions, and public relations. Our party will be made into a single unified front under the General Secretary's leadership. Ah, Algeria. Nothing like Algerians killing Algerians. Nothing like it. I want to raid him, but we can't. Ah. How are we doing here? We're just building up an army base as well. This is really bad. We're actually lost. We're losing recruitable population factor and division organization, which sucks. Basically, black brigades. Nice hat, bro. Nice hat, dude. The Red Republic. Russia Democratic Council under Gorbachev, huh? Uh-oh. Oh crap, we got an icy reception. Oh, that's definitely not good. 
Oh, Zukov's got to be Grand Marshal. Okay, that makes sense. And I see reception. Assumes for some bizarre reason the WRF has rejected our efforts to begin cooperation with them, and they sent our envoy home. Due to this, we have no choice but to assume that the front is hostile force, adding one more enemy that must be conquered in order to reunite Russia. It's lucky that the front considers us traitors due to Comey's separation from them after the West Russian War. In any case, it doesn't matter. While the loss of the front as a potential ally is big, it is not deadly. We must take efforts to ensure that if the front is to invade, we must that it is us who will come out on top, not those traitors to solidarity. There you go. And we do have nine divisions, and the nine divisions that we do have, they're not great. Let's be real. They're not bad. The twelve combat with, so. Could be a lot worse. Everything else, we got plenty of guns. We could honestly start making these guys a little thicker. Infantry, we don't have enough guns for that. Enough arty, go and do that. Enough, we don't. We don't want to have enough arty. No way. No way. Heck, we could have enough arty for that. Go and do that too. We could use this stuff anyways. Yay! Look at this guy. He's got a small Fritz Schmenkel. Schmenkel. Who's Fritz? Secure the party, my friends, because we've got an icy reception in the direction of the party. The revolution succeeded, and now communism can be established in Komi, of course. Now I must determine how to establish communism. And so saw Zidane of Bukhara, no, of all different ideas on how to do it. Three low-level politicians were discussing this very question over lunch. Honestly, things that Donald's got vision. His passion could serve the future of the party well is what I think. Suslov's kind of creepy, you know, said Sergei between bites of a sandwich. Sergei, Suslov has led as well. He orchestrated a revolution. Why risk it on some intellectual? Have you heard some of the things that Donald has suggested? He sounds like a total nut job, exclaimed Maxim. Maxim, you butlicker. If Kaganovich was leading the party, you would follow him. Suslov's way too controlling. You should go with a more sensible option like Bukharina. She cares about the people in the revolution. She's a natural choice, replied Alexei. Yeah, all right. Bukharin's girl will probably destroy Russia a second time we let her take charge. She. The end of lunch break cut off Sergei's comment. Three politicians side packed up their barely eaten lunches and headed back to work. We were out of airshot during all that, right? Right? You know, I'll give you the credit of that if it comes down to it. Nice. You cannot be allowed to control the revolution from the shadows any longer. Ooh, that's not bad. Matter of unity. Bunkers to the north. Spur confusion. Bunkers to the north. Well, it would be nice to assume that the front will be passed if it's highly likely that they are mobilizing in an effort to reunify Russia under their own banner. As we board them, it is therefore highly likely that will be one of, if not the first target of the front. We need to ensure that our northern border can withstand an attack long enough for us to mobilize the majority of our forces. The best way to ensure this is by building bunker complexes all along the Sisola. The creation of these bunkers should allow us a sustainable, uh, suitable defense in case of a conflict logs to protect coming from the splitters to the north. Oh, let's go agricultural stuff. Because that was going down pretty badly earlier, so. We want to make sure that we're going up. Food for the hungry? Nice. Looty booty. 700 PP is not enough. Well, that definitely helped it out. Hey, 3.8% is not bad, too. And I see a reception. We'll just do this stuff uh, later on. Um, as much as I want to do it now. Uh, I want to go to war as fast as possible, so. It's pretty confusion. The WRF, despite its opposition to us, is still ideologically backed by the ideas of communism. Therefore, it's like highly likely that there are many in the front who oppose the opposition towards Comey. We must capitalize on this by spreading propaganda throughout the front, secretly about how it's betrayed the revolution in its darkest hour by turning it against a government led by the Communist Party. Furthermore, we must sabotage the infrastructure in the minds of the front in order to weaken them. This dual pronged effort of spreading confusion shall hopefully lead to the front becoming more divided, preventing them from attacking us and making a campaign against them even easier. Well, that's hope. And by God, do we need a lot of hope. You're going to have to train a little bit more than that, guys. Government prevails. Good job, government. Good old government. Oh, and there goes the group. Crap. And crap. I don't want to spend any more political power. We're going to need more manpower, too. We're actually demobilizing. Oh crap, that's not good. Huh. These pirates are still getting better, though. Uh. Watching all big ol' fat rears is next. 
Well, we can't array all of our forces in defense against the WRF. It would be remiss to leave the border with them completely undefended. Our recent bunker building efforts have allowed our defensive capabilities to increase, but it's obvious that we must do more. Patrols will increase along the Sicil line, we shall increase our observation efforts so that our rear is secure. This increased presence should hopefully deter the front from attacking, even if they are to attack our enemies. Or our greater defenses should prevent them from gaining any significant ground and inflict a large amount of casualties. Get that for a year? That's not Wipe the slate clean. Good. Because we want to go the war as fast as possible. And core territory as fast as possible as well. That's my main goal right now. Uh, you can do it. That's a shipping bitch as well. Oh boy. Well, here we go. Brazil on 100 days. Not back down so easily. Oh, are they looking not too good right there, huh? Oh, yeah. Come on, kill, kill, kill us. WRF. Zuka. Bukharanists, huh? That's a lot of manpower. That's a lot of divisions. Holy crap. Oh, nice. Good job, guys. Yay. Nikolai, good job. 4% growth. Not bad. 69.9%. Nice. Not bad, but could be better. Yeah, it's still going up. Huh. Alrighty. Keep training for now. What's equipment like? Not bad. We need a few more guns and a little bit more motorized. We have enough anti tank for now, which is actually really nice to see. And support equipment is looking good too. Okay. Watching our fat butts at the service. We'll have to say clean. Um, ever since the West Russian War. Russia has been polluted with countless petty warlords, all proclaiming themselves to be the true savior no more. The time is coming to bring this age of warlordism to an end and restore the red banner of communism. We must begin to move against the local warlords, bringing them under our rule. Plans must be organized, troops must be moved, and bureaucracy must be ready to help integrate the new territories, as there may very well be resistance to our rule. It'll be a long time struggle before we're able to complete reunification, but we do not. Russia may uh, very well be left in this anarchy for eternity, which would be truly a tragedy at the service. Mr. Ender's service was a favorite part of... Oh, no, if you want to visit one, please go ahead as well. So, nothing is sacred. Yay. Yay. And then we have Intro Conflicts. That's not great. Well, that, cool. Against the Tsarists. The Monk's Inner Sight. I kind of probably want to go to the War of Them as fast as possible first. Just to get some sort of territory. And hopefully core them quickly enough. So. Alright. The Monk's Inner Sight. One of the first targets identified by generals as the Order of St. George. These fanatical monks rule a fairly small amount of, amount of land and aren't backed by any other warlord militarily. As this will be a forward offensive, we must ensure that the army is ready for such a task. Troops shall be moved into position. But more importantly, we must educate the soldiers on the monks' fanaticism. We must make sure that they understand the flaws of the monks' beliefs and just how far they could go in order to make sure that we lose. Our briefings will allow the soldiers to be able to snuff up quickly out any pockets of resistance that may exist, as they will understand the madness of the monks. Nice. And that'll help GDP and stuff like that too, so... Oh. We can raid these guys too, huh? I mean, if we could raid and kill them off like this, that'd be pretty good, actually. And getting a 10th division is exactly what I wanted. Man, look at all this lag. I mean, it lags so hard. And it's not just TNO's fault, it's like the Hoi 4 engine too, but still. Bruh. Nice, we're done with that for now. Let's come back over here. Some better guns. March on the monasteries. The time has come to attack the Order of St. George and secure the right flank. Our generals expect uh, the campaign to be sure and not too difficult as the Order is a fairly small warlord and our army is grossly superior to theirs. And in any case, let's push onwards for reunite Russia. We'll try to raid them. See what they're like. We'll do this one and then we'll actually halt direct operations because I don't want to see this page anymore. For as long as we're here, so... Saka. Monks are gonna say, let's go. Let's go. Oh well. That's a really nice six. Six point one eight. Nice. Wow. A lot of social support. Some fashion support still. For, of course the power vacuum and monks in her sight. Watch on the monasteries. And then what? A seize of wealth? As we expected, the gaining monks had managed to acquire a lot of religious paraphernalia. However, we did not expect them 
that the value of the said paraphernalia to be this high. There's a huge amount of rare and valuable resources, such as gold stashed away in places where the monks hoped we'd never look. Sadly for them, though, some of the people we captured were all too willing to show us where these valuable items were. This wealth will be very useful in funding your efforts to reclaim Russia. We can even use some of this wealth to help fill the treasury. While there might be some more religious people who are mad about selling off church property, the fact of the matter is that this money goes to the just cause, the reunification of Russia. Nice. Just gonna go here and just gonna go on in. We should be able to win pretty easily and be able to record this up pretty nicely too. Uh, loot, yes. And workers, sure, why not. Everything else is going up except for admin efficiency, but there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, we have to be at peace for this, right? Or against Tsarists. Yeah, maybe not. The collapse of the WRF brought many different warlords to power, many claiming to be the true Russia. One of the most egregious warlords of them all is Vyaka. These Tsars seek nothing but the reimplementation of the monarchism, the system that crumbled in its own way back in 1917. The Vyakans are directly to our south, which means that they're undoubtedly the biggest threat as, uh, right now to Komi. We cannot afford to let this menace fester on our border, or else we will risk the destruction by these reactionaries. We must seek to exercise these Tsars from Russia once and for all so that we can finally be free from the specter of monarchism. Mostly then we should be able to win here pretty easily. Oh, forgot about this too. Uh, so with all this one's done, that's pretty nice. Uh, make sure we have actual engine uh, industry going as well. I don't want to forget about that. So one on, on like military matters now, one on the other stuff. So I think that'd be quite a balanced approach. Goodbye, trick a dick. The claimer's sister republic. If Komi had a sister, Vologda would be it. Both republics have attempted to do something neutral, and the Komi Vologda relations have never been horrible. Now that we begin our efforts to reunite Russia, it is critical that we attempt to reclaim Vologda in some way. It is certainly possible, given deft negotiations, that we could peacefully integrate Vologda, but a peaceful integration requires both sides to be willing to integrate something that Vologda and government may not be willing to do. We must prepare to, in some form, annex Vologda. Wait, can we actually declare war? This is weird. Usually just done by focuses, but okay. Why not? Get a lot of that army XP if you can, please. Thank you very much. Oh, we could raise war taxes. 50% more business and income tax, huh? 5%? That hurts that bad. It doesn't help that much either, so. It costs a little bit of PP, but whatever. It's fine. Gainy. Oh. There we go. Not bad, not bad. Go all the way. Hopefully. Oh. Well, it's definitely not ideal. God dang it. If they can picture that, I'm taking... I want the territory. Like, that's not fair to us. They're literally going to cut us off, aren't they? Okay, we got the territory. That's good. That's good, at least. Now it does give us more border here, which sucks, but whatever. And then let's use the wealth. Actually, you know what? Let's not do that one. I want to do it. Claim Assistance Republic first. So then we'll do that and build a line. We'll be good to do as well. And I'll worry about that and we'll call, probably call it an episode. Alright, build a line. A war with like, Vyak will be anything but easy. It's likely that it'll take time for us to fully breach our lines and therefore we must construct defensive defenses of our own. We must begin to construct fortifications along the bank of our Vyaka River. So that even if we're not able to immediately storm the Tsarist lines, we have a backup plan that will allow us to hold against our armies. The defensive line shall include trenches, bunkers, and observation outposts, everything we need to defend against Vyaka if need be. But, this line of defense, while comprehensive, will not be maximized to its fullest potential as we need the resources to contribute to the war itself, not just defensive structures. But, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I'll catch you later, as we will try not to die to everyone who wants to kill us. Thanks for watching, and have a great, 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 sus, no, no, great, 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 Zedanov, rest of your day.